just give me a, bear with me a second. I need this not because it's got my notes on it, but because I'm going to try something innovative and tweet and talk at the same time. <laughs> um, not really. Um, Right, so um, in discussions of this type um, on innovations in, in, in crop breeding, um, quite normally uh, and rightly focus on, on the product. How, how do we ensure uh, that innovation keeps happening, useful products uh, keep coming down the pipeline uh, and into the marketplace uh, and onto mar uh, farmers' fields? Um, now, while that is absolutely necessary and uh, pretty much inevitable um, in the sort of commercial work we, uh, world we live in, uh, there is the danger, we do run the risk, um, potentially, of taking for granted uh, the other end of the product development uh, pipeline. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, the fact is that plant breeders uh, need raw materials. Um, they need crop genetic diversity. Uh, that's their playground, although they, they do vary, they do differ in the amount of in how willing they are to get down and dirty into, in, the, in the sand pit, in the sandbox of the playground. Uh, that, that's where they live. Um, innovation in plant breeding is really innovation in how you look for and package uh, and, made, and make available crop genetic diversity. Uh, and that crop that gen genetic diversity is found uh, in its most readily accessible form uh, in the world's gene banks. That's what I mean by the other end of the product development pipeline, and it's, it is often neglected, taken for granted even. Um, it's taken for granted sometimes because uh, it's not particularly sexy. I mean, uh, what is it after all? What is a gene bank after all but just a bunch of seeds in a cold store, in, in a fridge? Well, of course, there's a lot more to the work of gene banks than that. I don't have to say that uh, and explain it in this, in, uh, to this audience. Uh, but um, we do need well-functioning gene banks. Uh, and that doesn't happen by itself. It needs work. It needs innovation. Uh, and that's why gene banks need to be part of the discussion. Um, they need support and nurturing just like the other elements in the, in the product development pipeline. Uh, focus on the business end of the pipeline, uh, as is often the case, not here, uh, can obscure this, can obscure the need for support and innovation at the other end as well. And innovation is clearly needed. Uh, we know that gene banks could be better, much better, uh, at making their contents available for use to breeders and others. Uh, part of that is down to policy and politics. Uh, but we do now have the international treaty, we've been hearing about that, uh, to provide clear rules for access and benefit sharing, and very innovative, unique rules they are, based on this unusual but very appropriate for this agricultural context, where you have uh, um, uh, countries uh, dependent on each other to a, uh, to a great extent for genetic diversity. Um, uh, a very appropriate multilateral approach. Um, the treaty opens a window um, of open access to germplasm and associated data, which is uh, nicely complementary to the, um, what we've been hearing about uh, tradeability, the tradeability e-licensing e system for more downstream technologies. I think there's great synergy there. Uh, but apart from the politics and the policy, uh, part of it is also down to more technical issues. Many gene banks have trouble managing their data and sharing it with the rest of the world. Uh, not because they necessarily don't want to do it, but because they lack the resources and capacity and uh, tools to, to do it. Um, we in the gene bank community, and by that I mean the treaty, uh, the International Agricultural Research Institutes, gene banks around the world, and ourselves at the Global Crop Diversity Trust, uh, we're trying to address this, this in, a, in, a, uh, in a number of different ways. Uh, I'll mention just th three of them. Um, we're working on uh, gene bank data management tools uh, to help with uh, managing workflows and the resulting data, uh, dealing with requests, 
uh, searching um, uh, holdings, um, uh, making the work of the day-to-day -day work of gene banks more uh, efficient, effective, and therefore more open to uh, uh, to use. Uh, we're working on a an online platform um, and online standards for sharing gene bank data, uh, completely open, which will be open, which will have data and ways of uh, requesting material uh, based on queries uh, on, uh, uh, on traits or uh, provenance of the material. And we're supporting gene banks in actually digitizing their data in the first place, sometimes for the first time. Um, for example, in a project with the, um, one of the great gene banks of the world, and one of the earliest ones, uh, the Russian gene bank, the Vavilov Institute of uh, Plant Industry, and we're doing that work um, uh, with support from the Syngenta Foundation. Uh, so gene banks are where we find the raw materials uh, for the innovation, for the innovative plant breeding that we all agree we, might, we, we need to have. Uh, I'd like to make a plea that we, we, we continue to include gene banks, as we're doing in this forum, uh, in this conversation, um, so that they get the chance to innovate as well, and also benefit from the innovation that is happening further down uh, the pipeline. Thank you very much.